All right, so I literally just saw Chronicle, and I'm recording this almost immediately after stepping out of the theater. And if I don't get this done now, it's not going to get done. I've got a really tough schedule today. So if this isn't really polished, which none of my podcasts are really all that polished anyway, but if this is less polished than usual, that's the only reason why. So anyway, Chronicle. Wow. Wow. I did not expect to like this movie as much as I did. I am quite surprised, and maybe I'm the only person that feels this way. I haven't really looked at what people are saying about it. Maybe a lot of people hate it. Maybe a lot of people like it. I don't know. But every time I saw the previews, I rolled my eyes because I thought it was just going to be another special effects showcase. And I'm not saying they never go too far with the special effects in this movie. There are times when they do, but it's really, it's really got heart, I have to admit. Well, here's the thing with found footage movies. Every time you see one of these, they better convince you that it's legitimate, but there's always going to be some kind of logistical problem that you either suspend your disbelief about or you just call bullshit and then the movie doesn't work for you at all. If you're the kind of person that does that really easily, then this movie is probably not for you. Though I will say that this found footage movie at least gave us enough credit to not try to bullshit us. That's what I like about some of the found footage movies I've been seeing lately, is they're moving away from that. This is shit that we found, and it was, uh, it was recorded by such and such, uh, and then f- missing for many years, and we recently just recovered this footage. There's no opening title screen like that. There's no end caption that says, oh, this is what happened now. It knows that it can't convince you that this is real footage. It's never trying to present itself as found footage per se. The only thing that makes it found footage is that every shot comes from a camera. And there's more to say about that, but I'm trying to avoid spoilers as much as possible. Why do I think that this movie is so successful? Well, really, like any other found footage movie or any movie in general, you have to identify with the characters. You have to... I would say that you have to like them, but you don't necessarily have to like them. Because the main character in the story, he does a lot of really bad shit that you don't agree with, that you don't condone. But they present it in a way where you understand the character, and even though he's doing these horrible things, they made a smart choice by letting us get to know this guy, letting us get to know all of these characters before they start doing all this weird shit and bad shit, so you know where everybody's coming from. Without rooting for them, without condoning them, it's just you recognize these people in your life. Probably my biggest problem with Apollo 18, which a lot of people are after me on YouTube about that now. Not happy with my review about that at all, I guess. Well, one of my problems with that, aside from the thing of whether or not rocks are scary, for me, it's I didn't get to know the two characters. In this movie, I got to know these people for long enough that I was able to identify which character was which, And quickly, because within the first, like, 30 seconds of the movie, you understand the the main character really, really well. Now, there's not too much else I can say without giving away spoilers, but basically, if you have any interest whatsoever in seeing this movie, I think you should see it, and I think you're going to like it. If you looked at the previews and said, that looks like shit, you're not going to like it. Then again, consider that I didn't really think it was going to be good, but I think it was going to be horrible. I thought it was going to be okay, and I actually liked it quite a lot. But to avoid rambling too much and to stop being repetitive, I'm going to give the spoiler alert now, and I'm going to talk about this movie, and if you don't want to know what happens to it, shut this review off right now, and then maybe watch it after you've watched the movie. So... The main character is this guy, Andrew, who you quickly learn is a big geek in school. 
and he's got a pretty tough life. His father's an asshole. His father's an alcoholic, used to be someone, and they did kind of go over what turned him so you understand where that character is coming from, too. And he's got a mother that's dying, essentially. So you definitely identify with this guy right away. Not to mention, I think that everybody knows this kind of person. You've either met him in life or maybe even, dare I say, you can recognize some of this guy in yourself, which is kind of scary. But for some people, it might be true. Maybe it's true for me because I I didn't get picked on in school, but I certainly was not Mr. Popular. And this guy, he goes to school, and people are, like, beating him up. And, you know, obviously the beating up thing didn't happen to me, but I got made fun of a lot. And when you're in high school or middle school or what have you, and you're not popular then people just kind of take their pleasure in putting you down, especially if you react to it. And that's what happens to this kid. Part of the reason why they pick on him so much is for whatever reason, he just starts filming anything. And that was one of my big problems with this movie is... But on the, at the same time, I was kind of willing to forgive it for, I don't know what reason, maybe because I got into the character. If you're wondering why everything's filmed... They don't tell you that. You know, he just starts filming things. He even says that several times, I just started filming things. Why? I don't know. I'm I'm just doing it. He, He never gives a reason why, and that does kind of bother you. With most found footage movies, they're filming everything because they want to catch something on film. And even though later on with the weird shit starts happening, they're all like, oh, catch this on film, catch this on film. But... Even at the start of the movie, when nothing supernatural is happening, he's taking the camera everywhere, and people are real annoyed with that. And I was kind of wanting a reason why this is just some kind of obsession. I was kind of wanting to hear more than just, yeah, I feel like filming shit. Later on, when they actually do get their powers, they get it from some alien thing, and this is where you can get really frustrated with the movie because they don't explain shit about it. It's basically they find this spot underground. I don't even know how it got there. And it, it there wasn't much set up for finding this thing. It, it just kind of came out of nowhere. You might be annoyed by it. But they find this kind of underground cave that I guess has been inhabited by some extraterrestrials. And some unexplained phenomenon starts happening to them and they, they develop telepathic abilities that grow over time. And they can never figure out why, because when they go back to the spot, it's like mysteriously covered up. And you never get any answers whatsoever as to why they were getting it. Was it an accident, or were the aliens kind of designing this thing? If you like trying to guess at the answers, you'll probably like this movie, because they don't really tell you shit. It's just, all of a sudden they have tele- uh, telekinetic powers. I can't talk right now. Told you this was going to be a rough edit. Anyway, they start developing these abilities, and at first they're playing jokes, and it's funny. And the kid is really liking this because he, for whatever reason, has better control over these powers than any of them. He's far more capable of doing it than they are. You know, they start doing the powers, and they kind of compare it to, like, using muscles. If If you go too far, then you might tear a muscle. So you have to weight lift... Slowly, that's the analogy that the guy gives. So the other two guys, there's there's, uh, the main character, Andrew, and then there's the other character, Matt, and um, unfortunately, the other guy's name escapes me. Uh, He's the one you see in the trailers who who says, oh, yeah, this time it was the black guy. But all three of these characters are very likable, as I said before, and yet for some reason, unexplained... Andrew, the main character, is the one who has the most power. And he makes that very clear to them. He has some kind of gift. And you understand where the kid is coming from because he really has never had any kind of talent. They try to get him into a talent show. And he says, you know, I really don't have any talent. So when he's able to do this thing, he's loving it. And he's loving it a little bit too much. To the point where he's messing around with his powers while he can hear his mom, like, coughing and 
essentially dying in the next room over. But after he, you'll see a scene of that, then immediately afterwards he'll go, like, check on his mom, help him out. He's a lot more compassionate to his mother than the father is, I think. So there's never a point where you really, really just stop wanting this character to live. There's never a point where you actively root against this character or want him to get killed. You don't want him to do bad shit, no. But a lot of times he gets his revenge on people. And the disturbing thing is you are almost rooting for the guy when he gets his revenge. When he finally like turns on his father, like his father beats the shit out of him constantly. Then when he finally gets his power strong enough, he kicks the shit out of his father. And so like you're almost for a second going, yeah, good. And then realizing, whoa, fuck, what am I saying? And for him, it's the same exact reaction. Because in the beginning, in the middle of the movie, every time he does something horrible like this, he may not quite let it sink in immediately, but when it does, he realizes, fuck, what am I doing? I didn't mean to do that. But as the movie goes on, he begins to lose all his boundaries. And he becomes extremely dangerous. To the point where he... He really kills his own best friend. And it's like the whatever power he has or whatever the aliens are doing to him are getting the best of him. And he starts saying, you know, like, you guys never really liked me before I had these powers. Before I started doing this shit, you treated me like fuck. And in that regard, you kind of, again, I don't want to sound like a broken record here, but you kind of understand where he's coming from. The other thing is... The reason why this kid is likable is that he is a kid and you do kind of, maybe this is different for me because I'm not, I'm not a teenager anymore. Um, I still kind of consider myself a teenager at heart, but there's a lot of teenagers out there that just make really, really bad choices. They're not bad kids, but they make a bad choice and they sometimes suffer some really horrible consequences. And that's the same thing for this kid. It's just on a much, much huger level where the consequences are catastrophic by the end of the movie. It really does build and escalate naturally to the point where when they have that final act of the movie, you're not calling, oh, God, bullshit. Okay, you know it's not real. But it's escalated enough so you don't feel cheapened when all of a sudden this guy is like toppling buildings. Although the final act is where I have an issue with it, and it's the way this guy is finally stopped. Without giving major spoils away, I just felt that it was too quick. And considering how powerful this guy has become, I expected a little bit more. But you know, I wish I had more time to talk about this movie, but I don't want this going to like one of my three or four part podcasts. So you probably will hear me say more about it. And I wish I articulated it better. Maybe someone else out there can. But definitely this was a real, real surprise. And I probably creeped a few people out by saying, ooh, ooh he's identifiable. Everybody knows Sir Buckethead is a little bit nuts. But I'm not so nuts that I would do this. It's, it's disturbing how much you actually like such a, such a character like this who is really destroying things that often seems to have no feelings for other people. But at the same time, he kind of does. As a matter of fact, the way things really get out of hand is not when he feels like showing off in front of his friends. No, it's when he has to get medicine for his mom and he doesn't have the money for it. So that's when he really, really starts going overboard. And I wish I could talk more about it, but I really got to get going now. I am out of time. Hey, listen, watch this movie, chat with me about it on Twitter or on YouTube, and I hope to hear from you soon.